Happy Valentine's Day. Let's talk about the players we love on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is Tuesday, February 14th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scotty Dubs, Scott White, and Chris Towers. The whole gang is here. Let's start off with Chris, a hitter and a pitcher that you love in 2023. Well, the pitcher that I love, I'm going to go with a homer pick, you know, me and my Marlins. I love Edward Cabrera, and part of it is just I love the way the Marlins develop their starting pitchers. Edward Cabrera, classic Marlins prospect, throws really hard, has a great changeup. There are some concerns about his ability to stay healthy, but what we saw last season, he's most of the way to being a very good pitcher already. I think he just has to cut the walk rate if he can manage to do that. There's a lot to like here. But the player I really love, and this is kind of a homer pick, my dad's from Pittsburgh, so I can claim O'Neill Cruz as a homer pick. I love pierogies. I love Three Rivers Stadium or whatever, PNC Park. And I love O'Neill Cruz. O'Neill Cruz is, I mean, what's not to love about him? He's one of the arguably the most fun player in baseball right now. Has the hardest hit ball in the StatCast era. He's the first player in the StatCast era, not named John Carlos Stanton, to have the hardest hit ball in a season. That tells you what kind of stratosphere we're dealing with here. Legitimate 80-grade raw power. A lot of strikeouts last season, obviously. He struggled against lefties. But we saw in September, he had a 30% strikeout rate, and he hit 288. That is not an unreasonable outcome for O'Neill Cruz because he hits the ball so hard. This is an Aaron Judge level power prospect who, you know, I'm not, nobody can, you can't project someone to improve the way Aaron Judge has, but he's got the skill set. He's got the baseline level of ability. Now it's time to hone those skills. I believe he can do it. I love O'Neill Cruz, and I know everyone loves O'Neill Cruz. There's something special about me. <laughs> There's a big range of outcomes when it comes to O'Neill Cruz, but one of those outcomes is he could return first round value if Absolutely. everything clicks here in his second season. Scott, we'll go over to you, a hitter and a pitcher that you love the season if he hasn't well, already been stolen. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is uh, O'Neill Cruz, when you first presented this question to me, that's who immediately came to mind. But then... Chris claimed him first, and it's like, do I really want the player I love? Do I want that much competition for him? Don't like, I, I might lose that competition, and I, I mean that in the fantasy sense too. Like he, he, people might reach for him earlier than a point where I'm, I'm looking to shortstop, looking to fill shortstop because it's such a deep position. So I'm gonna go with somebody who tends to go a little later. Uh, a little less well-known, but I think very exciting upside for Miguel Vargas as well. Guy who consistently hit 300 in the minors. Certainly no strikeout issues for him. Good at getting on base, too. Doesn't have that 40 homer power, but I think his power is being underestimated in general. Um, and, and then he he brings a little speed, too, as well. Most importantly, he's going to be picking up eligibility at second base, it sounds like. It sounds like he's the leading candidate to start there for the Dodgers. Could add third base and outfield before the year's over as well. So he could become a really versatile player on top of everything else. So Miguel Vargas is the hitter I'm going to say I love for this year. Uh, the pitcher is going to be Chris Sale. Chris Sale, old, worn out, broken down. Chris Sale, I still see good in him. I think he's being cast aside too soon. Uh, of course, you know, at this time last year, we we're all excited about his return from Tommy John surgery. And he had made nine starts the year before in 2021, come back from Tommy John surgery, basically looked like himself. So we had reason to be excited. It was another sort of Justin Verlander situation. Uh, but then last year, Chris Sale had the fractured, uh, the, the stress fracture in the rib cage early on, came back only briefly before he broke his wrist. Those are not the kind of injuries we normally worry about for pitchers having a carryover effect having a reoccurring effect those are just fluke things that happen to chris sale and so i think it's just it, it's honestly just fatigue the reason people are passing him over so much now we should be as enthusiastic about chris sale as we were last year and uh i would say for both of these players vargas and sale my heart genuinely breaks when i see someone else take them in dress and that's how you know frank that's how you know it's true love 
Going shortly after Chris Sale is actually the pitcher that I have on this list, and that is Jeffrey Springs. Last year, I gave you a Tampa Bay Rays pitcher I love, Shane McClanahan. This year, it's Jeffrey Springs. I hope we can get a very similar outcome among starting pitchers with at least 130 innings pitched last season. Springs ranked 15th in K-minus walk rate and 13th in swinging strike rate. The question is, can he progress in terms of his innings pitch? That is uh, the biggest drawback here, but the... Per star production, I think, is going to be very, very good for Jeffrey Springs this season. But the player I really love, I love both of them. But the one that I want most is Corey Seager, who seems like he is undervalued right now with an ADP around 50. You can get him in the fifth round. And the uh, batting average last year was low at 245. His XPA was 283, so I think he was really unlucky in terms of the batting average. Career-high 33 homers, 91 runs, 83 RBI, I think... Both of those numbers could go up as well, assuming the batting average climbs uh, also for uh, Corey Seager. So there's a lot to like here. He hits the ball hard, uh, and I think big things are coming. A big bounce-back season for Corey Seager. We're going to wrap there. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.